Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and in this video, part one, we're going to talk about the Evertune Bridge and an exciting project that I am undergoing currently, having an Evertune Bridge installed in an eight-string guitar. So, what's the Evertune Bridge? Well, actually, full disclosure, I'm not being paid for this. This isn't a paid review in any way, shape, or form. I did contact the guys at Evertune to ask if they would be willing to send me a bridge um, at a review rate because I, I don't want those guys to lose money. I'm just very interested in creating this video for you guys. They have sent me the bridge and I am having that installed at my own expense. That is going over to uh, John Shuka probably tomorrow. And yeah, he's going to install that and we will um, we will go from there and do part two of this video. In essence, the Evertune bridge is a mechanical system. It requires some work on the guitar, some routing in the back where you have a spring-based tension system. Essentially, every saddle has its own spring, which will control the tension on that string. So any fluctuations in the tension on the string will be reflected or compensated for by the spring. In turn, that will move the saddle to keep the string exactly in tune, exactly as you had tuned it. Evertune have got some great videos on the ins and outs of the mechanics on how this works. I'm not going to bore you with those details, but in essence, it's very, very clever. I've been a fan of it for a long time. In fact, some of you that follow my channel will know that I have ordered a custom shop Mayonnaise six string and it's an Evertune equipped guitar. So, you know, I don't mind spending the money on a product that I really like and I really like the Evertune. It solves a lot of studio problems for me, but we'll come on to that. So, why am I interested in the Evertune in particular for the eight string? Well, the thing with the Evertune, the problem with the Evertune is I know it's hard for you guys to go out and try one. They, your, your local guitar shops probably don't have an Evertune equipped guitar in, I understand that. And the idea of them having an Evertune equipped eight string guitar, extremely unlikely. I've done a little bit of digging and I know uh, ESP, for example, do ha they have announced the Eclipse. They, are, they have an Eclipse eight string now that comes with an Evertune. So if you are interested, there is a production model that you can get. But aside from that, in essence, it's a case of really buying one and having someone install it. And that's you know not massively convenient and it could result in, in changing an instrument in a way that you don't absolutely love. So I wanna give you the ins and outs and, and tell you why I'm doing this. In essence, this is my Mayonnaise eight string. I picked this up recently uh, in a trade deal, to be honest, to do this video. I thought it would be a lot of fun to do this video um, and to talk about the Evertune. So I'm not an extended range guy. Anyone that has watched my channel and seen me play the 8-string will know this guy isn't really an 8-string guy. I am not the next Tozen Abassi. I'm not really even a metal guy. I love metal, but you know uh, that's not who I am. Don't take me seriously as a metal guy, unless I'm talking about my album, in which case you should go and buy that. That's some good good old school heavy metal. Anyway, point is, not an extended range guy. Now, of course, I have plenty of friends that are extended range guys. I spent many years hanging out with uh, pals like Doug Cartwright in London, who is super into the extended range thing. And then I got to know Sam Bell quite well, who is an eight string guy. Who, who doesn't know someone that plays extended range instruments? just not really my cup of tea. And in essence, I can explain why. I'm quite heavy handed on the instrument. I like to dig in, I hit the instrument quite hard when I play. And I find that, and this ties in very nicely with my recent video on fanned frets and, and uh, you know, multi-scale instruments. On an eight string or even a seven string, I never find the scale length to be ideal for the way I play. What I really need is a 28 or 29 inch scale length for, for a low F sharp note to keep it in solid tune with the velocity with which I am likely to hit that string. You can do this yourself on your own six string guitars. Take your standard six string guitar, take the low E string and tune it down. Tune it down to a G or something like that. And what you will find is that because the note is, is so loose, the string is so loose, it doesn't have enough tension. When you really hit that string, First of all, it's more likely to go out of tune, but when you hit it hard, what you will hear is that the note, because of the sheer force you're applying to the string, the note will go sharp in whilst vibrating and then return to pitch. So you don't get this smooth hitting of the note and getting, uh, uh, you'll get, uh, uh. 
I don't know why I did that with my voice. I'll do it on the instrument soon. Then you'll really get an idea of what I'm talking about. That sound drives me crazy. And for me, I find it's accentuated on the seven and eight string instruments that I've played. Again, because of my heavy handedness. So I want to play more eight string, but it kind of annoys me that my low F sharp, or when I tune it down to a low E, it never, never sounds quite right. It's, the intonation on it is never quite right to me. And especially as I play up the neck on that string, I find that the intonation can be a little bit sketchy. And it's not because the fretwork is bad, it's because any minute changes in the pressure with which I'm playing that string can push the note sharp. And that can have a huge impact on what you're playing. And to me, and in my experience, the Evertune can kind of solve this issue because you can set it in such a way that even if you bend a string, the springs will compensate for that and stop that note from going sharp. You don't have to have it in that mode. You can put it in what they call bend mode. We'll talk more about that in uh, video two. I'll demonstrate that for you. But in essence, yeah, the idea was simply that. It would be fun to have an instrument whereby I don't have to worry about the tuning stability when I'm hitting it hard. It's got nothing to do with laziness in not wanting to tune my guitar. I'll tune my guitars when I pick them up, you know, as a matter of playing. I'll play them, and if it doesn't sound or feel quite right, I will make those adjustments. That's fine. I'll still check with my Evertune, though I'd like to think I'll need to make minor adjustments even less. But the point really isn't about that. So in essence, yeah, this guitar is going to be sent off to John Shuka. He is going to take this out, do some routing on the guitar, and put the Evertune bridge in there. And we will come back and take a look at that. But why don't we do some tests on this guitar? So what we're going to cut away to now is some clips of this guitar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that low string in F, F sharp, and I may do some clips in E as well. And I'll play it not too hard. I'll try and be consistent with the, with the uh, pitch. And then I'm going to really dig in and hit it. And what you will notice is that that note will change in pitch. It will rise and then fall. I'll also do some stress tests on the strings. I will have the guitar nice and in tune, and then I will you know, pull the strings and try and put them out of tune, and we'll see just how out of tune those notes can go. I think that'll be interesting. Uh, and then last uh, but not least, I will play some riffs and things that maybe move a little bit higher up the neck and do some things so we can hear what the intonation of that string is like. And then when we come back and make the comparison to the uh, Evertune bridge, we'll be able to see how much of a difference that makes. So let's cut in some clips.
So by no means unacceptable. I don't think any of those are truly unacceptable, but these are just little niggling things that bug me. And I feel that if it's something that I can fix, if it's something that I can remedy, I'm going to try and do my best to remedy that. And I believe that the Evertune is going to get me there. So if the Evertune is something that you are interested in, obviously uh, the Evertune website is a great place to go for resources. They actually uh, they, they sell the guitars that come with the Evertune in. They also have a great uh, install service whereby you can send them your guitar and they will put the Evertune bridge in there. But you'll also be able to find more information on other builders that use or offer the Evertune bridge. Obviously, Mayonnaise guitars offer the Evertune. ESP have just started offering Evertune bridges. Uh, Kiesel guitars, they are now offering the Evertune. So it's definitely a piece of kit that people are jumping on board with. There are plenty of options out there. I know Solar, Ola England's brand, they had have or had an Evertune model. I, th I know it's currently out of stock, but I assume he will continue to make more of those. So the point is, it's totally possible to get your hands on an Evertune. And if what I'm saying to you, if it speaks to you, if you hear what I'm saying, you go, you know what, that is a problem that I have had for many years and it has always annoyed me. The Evertune may just be your solution. But you'll have to stay tuned for part two, where we come back and really see just how much of a difference it's made. So I'm looking forward to that, and I hope you guys are too. Lastly, I just want to extend a huge debt of gratitude to these guys over here. These guys are my Patreon supporters. Thanks, guys, for your support. They support me over on Patreon.com. It helps to keep this channel going. It means that when I want to get a piece of gear in, like an Evertune, and it's going to cost me a few hundred bucks, to get everything done the way it needs to be in order to give you guys a fair idea of what the product is the money is there for me to do that so a huge thank you to you guys and of course they get lots of cool things in return if you would like to be like those awesome people and check us out over on patreon.com you can actually do so for as little as one dollar and you can do so by clicking that button up there you can subscribe to my channel by clicking this button down here and you'll see two more of my videos here and here maybe i'll even cut in some eight string clips in there I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not an eight-string guitar player. Don't take me too seriously in that world. Thanks so much for all the support, guys. Hit me up in the comments. My pleasure to serve, and I'll be back for part two as soon as possible. Bye.